I'm Ben Bailey, chef, and proud to call New Zealand home. I learnt my trade at some of the world's best fine dining restaurants, then came home to cook, earning three hats, two-time restaurant of the year, and two-time chef of the year. But it's time to go out alone and open a truly unique New Zealand restaurant. I want to find out what exactly our New Zealand cuisine is, where our produce comes from, and is it sustainable? I'm going to travel the country doing so. I want to create authentic New Zealand dishes. And believe me, it's going to be tough. It's come in 600,000 over budget. Join me on my journey. We're going to lose all the bollocks that comes with fine dining. This is truly a Kiwi story told through food. It's high risk as everything is on the line, but I need to follow my dream. After an epic trip in the South Island, I'm back in the big smoke now. The restaurant is still an empty shell. There is so much to do. Now we're back in Auckland and we've got some big decisions to make. We've got to sign off on the kitchen, sign off on a $2 million budget that's actually at $2.4 million right now. We've got to sign off on the logo, on the design, the look and feel, what timber we're going to use, and we're kind of around about, what, 20% over. Yeah, we just need to get that down a little bit, eh? <laughs> well, good luck with that, eh? <laughs> sure. It's a day of meetings with my business partners Chris and Bex, designers, project managers and architects. Ahi equals fire. Ahi brings fire and passion to the New Zealand food experience. Your purpose. Ahi is the one place you need to dine at to really experience the finest New Zealand cuisine and hospitality. A brand palette Manaki Tanga, which is hospitality, kindness, and the process of showing respect and care. I love the colours. I love this page. If we can bring that feeling into the restaurant and mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. communications that we have, then that's awesome. I actually do think like we should uh, just just double check on this lowercase a logo because. <laughs> Maybe the colour it's, while we're there. It's not yeah. too late. It's not, it's too, not late. too late. But the reason I love this is it tells a bit more of a story and, and it's, it's that one tiny cue that gives you a little bit more of a New Zealand feel and this little kind of this little koru coming down. <clears throat> don't you um, think it's a little bit overused? Don't care what other people do personally. Mm. Just make sure yeah. it's right for you. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I do like the little I do like the small thing. It's just got so much more character because um I think, you know, I, was, I think I was for a small eight. Yeah. <laughs> This is going to be a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's always concerning the green logos because you just don't see many of them. I mean, BP Petrol is the only green logo that I really know. Yeah. <laughs> this is far from the green, the green yeah. BP yeah. logo, right? Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be a challenge. I think we've got a, a, probably a little bit of work to do. Mm. Or a few more arguments. <laughs> Rob, robust come, discussions. Come on, we'll change it. Robust yeah, discussions. Yeah, that's right. We never robust. argue. We just have yeah. robust discussions. That's right. <laughs> Now it's our project manager's turn, who is running the budget, and the news is not great. We're over budget at the moment, aren't we? We're about 300, 400,000 over budget, so we need to peg it back somehow. We need to make the boat go faster, basically. And that, so if it doesn't make the boat go faster, we get rid of it. So we need to make sure we preserve the customer experience, we need to make sure we preserve the, the, hot, the basic function, the ahi of the, of the restaurant. And I, I guess the thing at the moment, we're spending a lot of money on things that we the can't customer see. can't see. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but they are important because things like air conditioning and completely so I guess you can feel them But it's um, it's a new build and there's a lot of unknowns because we need to make decisions quickly Yeah, and we trust the builder too. He's a great. He's a good builder. So we know he's not gonna gouge us or Yeah, he's gonna, I mean? he's gonna he's got to make money and we've got to make sure that, that everything's been correctly apportioned Yeah, and we need to pay him fairly have, having, having spoken to him I think it's important that we press play on a lot of things quickly yeah. anyway so the mechanical is one eighth of the budget just to bring air in and out of the restaurant. Yeah, so that's kitchen extract, supply air, um, solid fuel extract. But the crazy, thing is when we the crazy thing is when we open a window, none of those calculations work anymore anyway. So many things to take into consideration. It's becoming super frustrating. The total cost as, as calculated now is 2.17 million. Right. And, our, and our budget is 2 million. Okay, so we need to find 170 somewhere. Or we need to sign off on a higher budget. Basically, those mm. are your two options. Yeah. I'm hoping there aren't going to be any more expensive surprises. In the meantime, I've been booked to cater a function in the spectacular Waterfall Bay in the Marlborough Sounds, the home of Michael Saracen, award-winning cinematographer. It'll be a great chance to do some more research for the restaurant. 
So Chris, Bex, my head chef, Mike the Russian, all the kids and myself are heading to Marlborough. This function will be branded as an ahi pop-up restaurant to test some of the ideas and to gauge some reactions to where we are heading with the menu. It's going to be epic and just what the team need to focus on. And of course we'll use this to gather some intel on local produce. I love wild game and it's going to be a big part of our menu at Ahi. So before the function in a few days time I've teed up a wee hunt with the boys from Premium Game as I need to know where it comes from and more importantly how it is handled. How are ya? Morning Ben. Darren Clifford. Nice to meet you. Same to you. Thanks for having me. Welcome to Marlborough. Yeah, I'm super pumped. Where are we right now? We're in the Avon Valley, so we're uh, 35 minutes out of Blenheim. So we have a lot of wild deer across our two farms we've got here, and they naturally drift into this country. So I've cooked game all over the world, um, cooked game in New Zealand, a lot of it, but I've never really had the opportunity to shoot a deer before, so I'm super pumped. What are you expecting this morning? Um, well, hopefully we'll find a deer, but um, yeah, look, we'll, we'll head out and, uh, and try and track down. We'd like to find uh, something that's going to be really good eating for you, so some, maybe a younger deer, maybe a deer that's um, um, is going to have a little bit of fat on it so that it'll have some real texture and, and flavour for you. So we'll, uh, we'll work our way through and see what we can find and um, hopefully uh, set you up. This has been a massive dream of mine to hunt and follow the whole process. Wild game is going to be an important part of the ahi menu and finding suppliers that share the same principles as we do is so close to my heart. Once that sun comes up, it turns around. It's like an adiabatic. Can I see that the land heats up and it pushes? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They'll always just be in front of you. Yeah. They'll always just keep going in front of you. It's really yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Hunting. It's not meant to be easy. So we're walking up a monster hill. This guy's a machine. Um, we've spotted a couple of deer. Um, we're going to try and track them. So they know we're here. They know we're here. The hunt is definitely on. We just heard them bolt through the trees. The dogs are decaying. The chicken smell the deer. They're in here, son, man. Here it is. Oh, there we are. Here we go. So we've been out stalking for a wee bit. What, what exactly are we after today? Oh, no idea. We've got a young animal, maybe a spike or a, or a young female. Yeah. All the older females have got fawns at the moment, so we yeah. don't really want to be shooting anything like that. Yeah and the older stags are still growing their velvet. Yeah. So again, we don't tend to shoot them at the moment until they, till they yeah. rub their velvet off. And, yeah. Look back around. Hunting's not easy. It's a real sport. These deer can be a best. We should eat more game. I think he's onto one. So this could be it. I'm, I'm trying not to get too excited. I just want to be nice and calm. I don't want to stuff it up and look like an idiot. But also, I don't want to injure the animal. I want to clean kill. Cool. You really want to try and hit him right on the shoulder. Yeah. Or if he's at you know, an angle, you can go just behind the shoulder. Yeah, I can see him just. Oh, I can't see him. He's a bit better than me. Yeah, he's just there. He's... Take some deep breaths for him as well. Okay, when you're ready, mate. Yep, good shot. Well done. Drilled it. Perfect. So it's walked that way? Yep, that's right. It'll be down. Down, down. Rolled. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Coming downhill. Perfect. Beautiful shot. Well done, man. I'm just so relieved I shot it well, it was my main concern. Um, I'm kind of shaking, I haven't been nervous all day or anything, but I just, yeah, you just get a bit, a bit jittery. It's quite a surreal process. Uh, we haven't seen the deer yet, so um, I guess when 
I see it, the emotions will kick in. I mean, just taking the life of an animal and um, it's, we've got to do it justice and honour it. So we'll hopefully serve it up on Saturday at our pop-up. My business partners Chris and Bex along with our families are in Marlborough at the beautiful Waterfall Bay home of Michael Saracen. We are hosting a function as an ahi pop-up restaurant on Saturday for 25 guests. It's a good chance to see some local food producers. I also went on a hunt with the guys from Premium Game and shot my first deer. Now I want to see what the process is and hopefully these guys will be providing me with their wild game and the boss man Nick is going to show me the ropes. So this is her. She's beautiful, eh? Look at her. So she'll be about a year old, two years old? Yeah, I'd say she's probably a two-year-old. A two-year-old. And she's arrived from the field. So what's the process when the deer arrive? The process wants to come in chilled here. They're held for um, anywhere up to five to six days. Yeah. Um, so so skin on like this? Skin on, yep. exactly how you see it here. The next step would be for it to come into this skinning room. Yeah. Um, where a short quality inspector will remove all the organs and take it to their table to inspect it. It seems a bit excessive. I mean, what are they looking for? I mean, this is the most pure organic animal that we have in New Zealand. What are these guys searching for? So the glands are looking for TB. Yeah. Um, how, how, how would these guys pick up TB? Um, or potentially? Yeah, potentially from, from cattle. From cattle. Yeah, or possums and other TB carriers, the same yeah. as cattle would, would get yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Um, so TB is not a risk to human consumption, um, it's just something they're monitoring. Yeah, okay. So and no animal will be condemned because of it. We've got a function happening on Saturday, you guys are helping us out with the meat. Can we eat her on Saturday? Can we serve her to our guests? No, you can't. So we only inspect once a week. Yeah. Um, so which is on a Monday we skin an inspection, so because this was shot after the Monday, it'll yep. need to hang through till next Monday to okay. be inspected. Could I get a scent to the restaurant though? You can. Yes. Can, I, can I get the skin tanned? You can. Awesome, we're going to put that in the restaurant. Um, so we can't use, what should, I don't want to give her a name, so we can't use her, um, should we go look at some other meat that we Absolutely. can use? Um, I'm especially interested in tar, yep. so yeah let's do it. Since we can't have my deer, it will be portioned up and sent to Auckland, where it won't go to waste. So instead today I think we'll take some tar, which is a big mountain goat and super delicious. But I don't need the whole thing. We think it's a great meat. It's um, somewhere in between venison and goat yeah. as, as a meat. So eating tars, I, I love it. It's one of my most favourite meats, or game meats at least. I've always found it an awesome thing to serve to a customer because Often customers don't even know what a tar looks like and you yeah. find them Googling it on their phones. And see what it is. Yeah, yeah. controversies around tar, a docker are shooting a lot of them and not recovering the meat, aren't they? Predominantly not recovering it, yes. Seems crazy, it's such a beautiful, beautiful it animal. Is. The cost of recovery is high yeah. because it's very hard country to hunt and, and recover yeah. on. To land a, a body of, of tar in our factory is a lot more expensive than a body of venison. Really? But that doesn't reflect in the price? No. Because we, we, we want to have it as a product that people will, will want to use and yeah. utilise. For the lunch on Saturday, we're going to serve it raw. Great way of doing it. Awesome. This place is insane. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Wild pork bacon. Look at that. We're having that for breakfast tomorrow, guys. People think in general that venison is super gamey. Yep. But it's not, I find venison a very kind of mild flavour. I actually find sometimes beef stronger than venison. It is, and it's all to do, to do with how it's prepared and aged. But I think what you'll find is people have a little bit of a, a preconception of venison yeah. and they almost will taste it because they think they're going to taste it. Yeah. Um, but, so we do a lot of food shows, uh, yeah. and especially with our small goods, yeah. and get people to try it. Yeah. Uh, and we get a resounding comment from people go, oh, that's so much better than what we've had before. Well, we've got to change people's perceptions about how delicious, organic, wild meat is. Absolutely. The venison beer and venison red wine, so we'll give you some venison of Venison and beer. Dude, you stop it. 
I am loving my time in Marlborough and seasonally in January, what a perfect time to come. Some intel I received in the pub last night is that Mangarua figs are the best in the country and they are just down the road. Figs and game is a match made in heaven. Hi, lovely to meet you. Ben, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah same here. You. Look at these guys, holy yeah. sh**. This is um, Vlasov. Holy sh**, that's amazing. What are they called? Vlasov. Vlasov. Yes. Um, are they red inside or white? Uh, a like a pinky amber colour. Wow. I've never seen that before. Seeing these figs in situ reinforces that it pays to cut out the middleman and always go as local and direct as you can. So if you go in there, I thought I was going to have to climb a tree. What a find and what a score. I can't wait to use these at our function. And it's not just the figs, as the plums around here are next level good. We're at Windsong Orchard. These guys are world famous for their 100 varieties of plums and other fruits, including blueberries. So we've got to find Jenny Crumb. Jenny! Where are you? Hey, Hello. Ben. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh. My favourite plum person in the whole world. I love to hear that. Love to hear <laughs> that. Let's go. <laughs> wow, look at these ones. These are Louisa plums. Louisa plums. There you go. That's it. Wow, look at the shape of that. Yeah, they are a very unusual shaped plum. They're my plum for people who don't like plums. It's kind of like a plum meets a nectarine. It is. Wow, these are great. What are these ones? Oh, these are all European plums. These are called Angelina Burdette. Try that. These you see in the supermarkets, and they're bright pink. And I don't think they would ever get any flavour. So they are ones that have been picked too early? Yes, they pick them early because they last a long time, yeah. which is fine for the supermarkets, but people have got used to that and they think plums don't taste very good. Yeah. So I feel that I'm driven to prove them wrong. standardisation of flavour in supermarkets is just atrocious. Whether it's tomatoes or anything, everything tastes the same. Well, I looks think the they've same. bred them for keeping qualities to make it easier, but it's, um, if you can find, like we have a local greengrocer who we can supply just, you know, several crates several times a week, and that way our customers can get a supply all week that's ripe. Yeah, but at what cost? Than, well, yeah. Blows me away by Jenny's passion for plums. Everything is hand-picked every two days and only picked when perfectly ripe. And the taste, oh my God. Thank you so much, Jenny You're Crum. You're welcome. We'll go to the pack shed, choose some plums for, for Saturday. Right. And we'll see you next time. Great, I love choosing the plums for you. This has been a great trip for Intel alone and gathering respect and knowledge from producers whose ingredients I want to use at Ahi. Now I take it into my own hands, what could possibly go wrong? We're at Robin Hood Bay, it's just over the hill from Blenheim. But we're going out on this little tender, it's got a six horsepower motor, We've got three spear guns, three men and six horsepower. I don't know what the maths is but it um, doesn't equal speed. We're going to go out here and we're going to get some butterfish, hopefully, or some blue mochi. But also here they have a really special power called the yellowfoot abalone. It's a real beautiful thing. It only really grows in this part of the world in Westland. We've got Aquaman here, Chris Martin. Chris Martin is our, our GM and our business partner in Ahi, our new restaurant. So we need to get the front of house involved in foraging food. Three men, six horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We've got a bit on the line today. We don't mind getting some mussels actually as well if we can. I've hired the skills of Ceres and Vineyard's Joel, who knows these waters like the back of his hand. This is what New Zealand is all about, being able to jump into the ocean with your mates and forage, fish, harvest, hunt, and grab only what you need. Thank you, bro. Man, this looks like the spot for sure. This is our hunting ground. It's what I want to teach my children to do. It's also about teaching sustainability and harvesting only what they need. 
Well, you can't see much from my footage, but man, that was awesome. Great times and the rewards we've got are just so super amazing. Jean is uh, a man of the sea. <laughs> um, was it your first time spearfishing? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of my third, so we've got a butterfish, which is what we want. Heaps of power. Joel is like the power man. <laughs> How many are we allowed? 15, eh? Five each. Yeah. Kenna? Blue Moki. And look at this guy. Octopus. What a great start to the day, and now we're heading with our produce in hand to the idyllic Waterfall Bay for Ahi's first pop-up restaurant. I'm nervous and excited. Waterfall Bay, Marlborough. The home of Michael Saracen, international DOP and vineyard owner. The perfect setting for Ahi's first pop-up. The family is here and it's a special time. It's the evening before the big day and it's a lovely time to be with the business partners and family. With the restaurant opening looming, times like this are precious. Let's do a cheers everyone to our first Ahi pop-up. Yeah. Thanks everyone cheers. for being here. Cheers. So thanks everyone for being here. Mike the Russian. Hi. Your long suffering soldier. Bex and Joe and Kara and Chris. And Thank you so much. We're going to have an awesome day tomorrow. It's our yes. first pop-up. And me. And me. Oh, yeah. Don't forget me. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. One more time. But this isn't a night to party, as there is much prep needed to be done. Tomorrow is going to be a massive day. People are going to be tasting the beginnings of the ahi menu, but that's next time.